All right, so we're going to start and we're going to talk about responsive web design using AngularJS. Now, this is a very small part of responsive web design that I'm going to go over. And this is more about trying to address some of the issues that you have when you're building a responsive site. I'm not going to go into CSS media queries and, and a, a, lot of, a lot of that detail. This, this is more about what can you do from an AngularJS perspective that if you're trying to build a, a one-size-fits-all site that's going to change its appearance and that what can you do to make it fast, snappy, and eliminate a lot of, a lot of the issues that you have by trying to do that. So if you were looking for me to teach you about responsive web design, this is about all I'm going to tell you. It's an approach aimed at uh, crafting sites that basically give you the best viewing experience no matter what device you're on. So if you go to you, know, you go to the site, whether you go to it on a desktop, a tablet, or a, or a mobile, you're going to get the best experience for what you're using to view the site with. Um, and it, you know, it handles resizing, panning, whether you, you change your orientation. You know, it's actually going to change your display sometimes. And this is right off of Wikipedia. So that's, that's about as far as I'm going to go with that. So how, do, how is it usually done? There's two different ways people have tried to tackle this problem. And the first one is, is what a lot of people will do is based on what the user agent is coming in, they're going to redirect you to a different subdirectory. In the, they're either going to send you to like a desktop uh, tree or they're going to send you off to a mobile tree. And this is what Microsoft's MVC, they've actually built that into it so that you can actually say, I want to build a, a responsive, ready um, MVC app, and it'll generate both a desktop view and a mobile view for you whenever you create a view. The other way is, and, and the CSS media queries is the second way, and so what they're doing is, based on the screen size, they're going to like less than 768. They're going to basically change the definitions of the CSS to hide and show different things. They may, um, and they also change the width of, of what your columns are. And, and actually, Bootstrap is probably one of the best examples of how things work in, in that regard. So um, let me uh, give you a real quick example on how that works. So I'm going to jump out of here real quick. And I'm going to go over here to Rate a Stogie. So this, this is a little site that I had worked up a while back, but it's actually um, built with Bootstrap. And if you watch what happens as I start to move, you're going to start seeing things collapse and things drop down here when I get to a certain size. You'll notice that right about this point here, it goes from three, three rows across to one row up and down. And so everything is basically here. And if you notice, the menu disappeared. So if I pull it back out, you'll see that the menu will come back up, the, the navigation pane. So now you've got a drop down menu type of thing here. So this is actually done all based on the width of the screen that's coming across as a viewport. Now the problem with this is that if you're on a mobile device that has, let's say, a, a size sm smaller than 768 pixels, you're still pulling down all the images and all the content for the desktop site, even though it's hidden in the background. So what happens when that mobile device tries to, uh, well, actually, yeah, I guess I should have, I'm right here. So what happens is that your that mobile device bogs down trying to manipulate all that hidden hidden CSS or hidden um, web uh, stuff. Plus, you're, it looks like it's really slow because it's pulling down all these big images over, you know, over your 3G, 4G network. So that's not really a good solution. Um, and then with redirection, it's more of a maintenance um, nightmare fr from a developer perspective because every time you make a change on the desktop view, you got to make a change on the, on the mobile view. And you got to keep things in sync. And if you don't, then all of a sudden you, when some, you'll get these weird bug reports. It works fine on the desktop, but when they do it on the mobile site, they're missing an, an address line or they're missing a, a notes field because the developer forgot to update the, sec, you know, the mobile view ver, or a tablet view. You know, that's one of the things that I didn't like about iPhone development is their solution for doing the, uh, to do it in the different size screens was to build another 
resource file for each screen in the early days when they actually brought out the iPad net and they had the very first generation of uh, universal apps. You had you had multiple different uh, screen sizes. So if you changed something on one that was for the iPhone, you you had to make sure you went and did it for the iPad. Otherwise, that, that same data wouldn't show up, and your application would would bail on you. So we can actually use Angular to uh, help us solve these two problems. One is if we take and go down the CSS media query, then we can use Angular JS. Um, to actually um, hide that data so it never gets pulled down on your, on your smaller devices. Or we can actually use a service for the redirection and we can actually circumvent and redirect them automatically from the client. So the client can then figure it out instead of your app, your server side code having to figure it out. Um, we can also use ngif and ngswitch uh, to display their appropriate content. But the problem with like an ngswitch or and NGF is then you get all this complicated code in your HTML. If mobile, do this, or ng switch mobile, and, and stuff like that. So that isn't truly a really good way. So what we can do is we can build custom directives to handle whether we hide something because it's on a mobile device or a tablet, uh, or show something you know because it's on desktop, and and kind of take the same tack that ng switch or ng ngf and ng switch does so that we don't ever render that content. So it'll go through, it comes down initially, and if you use ng-source so that it doesn't actually, the browser doesn't see uh, a source for an image tag or, or something like that, you can actually just, basically, it comes down with your HTML, you remove all the HTML that's not supposed to be, be displayed, and then only render what you need, and only go to the server to get what you need for your display. So. I'm going to kind of go through two different versions. The first one is the redirect by using a service, and we're going to basically feed that in um, into, um, into our route configuration. So we're going to, we're going to basically, at, at the time we're actually set up our routing, we're going to basically determine are we a mobile device or a tablet, and then, we're, then we'll redirect everything appropriately. So let me switch over here to um, WebStorm. And so this, this is a start of a library that I have up on GitHub, and, and the link will be at the end of this, but it's basically called Angular Responsive, and it's a, it's a service and four directives. And the service basically is all the helper functions, like am I on a smart device? So, so in this case here, I look to see if it's a smart device. Is it an Android, an iPhone, a Blackberry, a Windows phone? And then that in combination with the screen size, is, I'm going to come back, this is a mobile device, this is a tablet, or this is a desktop. Now one of the other things I could do is I could also feed in, right now the, the sizes are hard-coded, but I could provide a, um, a block. And I, and I know this is probably hard to see, so let me make it much better for you guys to see here. Let's see here. Oh, come on. You mean a screen resolution range? Yeah, sc screen resolution range. So the, hopefully you guys can all see that a little bit better. Or should I make it a little bit smaller? Okay. So we start off with a uh, provider. And, um, and the reason we're going to use a provider is because we're going to inject this into a config method. And you can't inject a regular service into a config method. You actually have to use the provider pattern so that it actually will get it. Because at the, at the point uh, when the config runs, your services are not going to actually be gelled up yet. They're not all going to be created and, and instantiated. So you use the provider, which what it does, if you get down here at the bottom, is it actually exposes a method called dollar sign $get. And so what happens, you say provider.get this, and it then at that point will return back your service. So um, we're going to use that, and that's the main reason we're doing this is because we're going to inject this into the config section of where we define our routes. Um, so again, what I was saying here is we're, we have just a couple of very basic methods. Uh, is smart device, you know, and, and what we're doing is we're getting back the user agent from the browser, 
and then we're checking to see if it's iPhone, iPod, iPad, Silk, Android, Blackberry, Opera, and then we're going to return back true or false based on that. And then we're going to, uh, then we have a couple other methods here. Is mobile, is tablet, and is desktop. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check, is this a smart device? And then if that, if it is a smart device and the width is less than 768, then we're going to return back true, and that indicates it's a mobile device. Uh, if it's the width greater than 768 and it's a smart device, then we're going to say it's a tablet. Otherwise, we're going to just say if it's, if it's not a smart device, we're going to consider it to be a desktop. We don't care about the width. And so the, that way we can then use that in our, in our route config to do stuff. Now, and I'll get into the directives a little bit here when we look at the second project, which actually uses the directives to hide things. So let me go over here and I'll uh, pull up, uh, let's see, this is app two that we're going to play with. So this is a very, if, first of all, if you notice I have, um, uh, I, maybe I can make this bigger. He's not going to do it. Let me try this. What is it, control, mouse wheel? Yeah, he's, what? No, nah, he's not going to go any better. Anyway, I have a desktop folder and a mobile folder. So here's desktop, and it has a partial one and partial two. And let's make this big again, too. I should change.